Hello, hello, welcome to another Procreate video. So for this week's video, I wanted to try something new and I wanted to draw this beautiful little kitten, Luna. So Luna is a white cat. I'm not quite sure what breed she is, but she's beautiful. And I've never drawn a feline or a furry friend at all, really. I only have ever done cartoon versions. So what we're gonna do is talk through how I did it. So firstly, I've imported a photo of Luna. I also have a bunch of other photos besides. I've lowered the opacity and the first task is to outline the facial features and the body. The only, well, the main difference, I guess, with this compared to doing a portrait, I found is that you don't need to be as precise. Like, you'll see that the little tufts of hair that I'm doing and I'm sort of not being so strict with my brush movements. I'm using the studio pen, by the way, it's my favorite brush. Um, but you can see I'm attempting to do the whiskers and I keep deleting them, that was one of the harder things. But yeah, I'm kind of being fluid with the motion. So you can see there that I've got some little flicks of fur, but I'm not necessarily joining all the lines up and I'm not making sure that it's a solid block like I would if I was doing a portrait. So you'll see that I'm doing the whiskers here. This is the only time I changed my brush throughout the whole tutorial. Um, I actually ended up going to like a fine hair brush. I downloaded it from a set on Envato, so I'll see if I can find that and I'll leave that linked in the description. But I found this was a lot like more realistic, I guess, for the whiskers. And it took a little bit of trial and error and you had to have a really, really light hand, but I feel like these look a lot better than the studio brush. The studio, well, the studio pen is quite clunky. So yeah, we've done the face, we've got sort of the main features and now I'm gonna go for the body. So it took quite a while for me to get the proportions right. Obviously one of her paws is covered up, so I had to sort of guess what that would look like. And I think she's just woken up in this photo, so she does look a little bit tired. One of her eyes is slightly closed, bless her. So I had to sort of improvise. So you can see that I'm sort of doing like very faint brush strokes on like small parts of her fur. I didn't want to do her entire body as like zigzagged bits of fur, you know, cause it kind of lose its shape. So <laughs> look at me saying all this, like I've done it before. So <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. So you can see that there's some parts of the outline of like her front legs are like a solid line and some parts are fur and I sort of applied that rule all the way around. Not sure if this is the thing to do but we did it anyway. So yeah I'm just going to go around and complete all of these little bits and I actually realised towards the end that her tail isn't showing so I actually asked for another photo of her so I could include the tail and then I just sort of made up where it was going to go. So I turned off the image, so I went into the layers, turned off the image and sketched out a tail. Then I lowered the opacity of this. Oh, look, I'm just tweaking the <laughs> the hairs on the eels. I think I realized that I wanted them to be a bit more prominent. So you'll see that I kind of go around and tweak things as I go. But yeah, with the tail, I created it on a new layer, lowered the opacity and then drew over the top of it again with that same principle of like a little bit of solid line a little bit fur, nothing like uniform, just kind of free flowing and wherever. And you can see again, a little bit of fur, a little bit of straight line. So we have the basic body shape. Oh, I forgot her chin, the little cute chin. So um, yeah, now I'm just filling the background with whatever color. And then I've picked a sort of palely pinky white brush. And I'm still using the studio pen. I've created a new layer and I'm just gonna outline the head and the body in solid white. Now, luckily for me, Luna's colorings are actually quite easy to do because she's mainly white and then there's just a few patches of color and then her tail is black and sort of like a brown gingery color. Um, this color was too pink, so I ended up changing it. But you can sort of see it coming together at the minute. She looks kind of creepy. But I actually decided to go in and if you can see, I'm sort of like extending the white color away from that initial line. Like I'm not doing it on all of the sort of hair strokes that I did, but just so it's not like a solid black color, I'm sort of 
flicking them out a bit. I'm not sure how to describe that. You can probably see it best here on the tail. You see that I'm like making it not a solid line. I thought this just kind of blended her in <laughs> to the um, to the line drawing. So now we're going to do the markings. Now you'll notice in a second that I did something wrong, but we'll just ignore that for now. <laughs> what I'm doing first is her nose. So again, look at how cute that photo is on the left. She's a really tiny kitten there. So I did the pink of her nose and I also used the same colour for in her ears. I did end up changing this colour further down the line. Just make sure that you've created it on a separate layer. So each new colour is its own layer. Otherwise, if I do something wrong, it makes it really hard for me to delete. I've learned this the hard way. So I drew the pink of her ears and then I decided to go in with the eraser tool. So I just set the eraser tool to the same pen so it's the studio pen and deleted or erased bits of her so again I'm doing the like white effect with the fur on her ears so it's sort of like overlapping the pink and sort of made it blend in a little bit then I'm gonna tap with two fingers on her ears and lower the opacity too all right I've moved the main image of her up so I can see the shape of her eyes and I'm also adding the pink to under there and you can see on the eye on the left that I've made it a little bit bigger because she does have a little bit of a squinty eye in that photo so yeah you can sort of see we've got all the pink it's all on the same layer and I'm going to change the colour and the opacity of that in a second uh, just doing a few little tweaks on the eyes and here I am look changing the colour of the pink and sort of adjusting it a little bit so it looked a little bit more natural Right, I then imported another photo. Actually, it's the exact same photo as on the left. So I could pick up the colour of her eyes. So I went with this like brown shade. And what I'm going to do is what I do with like human portraits. I'm going to add a lighter shade. Oh, in fact, I did the dark shade around the outside. This was something I noticed when I zoomed in on the like reference images. That cats have this like black almost eyeliner it makes sense that eyeliner is called cat eyes now why have I never thought that before um anyway but I did that black like dark browny outline then chose a lighter brown just slightly lighter and did it around sort of like the pupil area and then taking the smudge tool on a soft airbrush setting I just smudged it out a little bit and you can kind of see that it makes the eyes look a little bit more three-dimensional I didn't want to do this too precisely because I want it to be like obviously a cartoon then I had the little uh, light reflections on a, another new layer because it's again a different thing and yeah I guess now it's to the markings so at this point I started drawing this big um, like black marking on her head did the same technique I just lowered the width of my studio pen and I'm just sort of using the same technique I guess so I'm using the eraser to erase some white parts and just I keep looking over at the photo on the left to make sure it sort of looks realistic and you'll see I end up blending a bit of brown into it uh, and etc so I'm just gonna sort of fast forward this bit and yeah then I'm doing above the eye and this was the moment when I realized I'd done that big brown splodge on the wrong side so I went into the layer I selected it and I flipped it horizontally and then I just sort of repositioned it and I'm sort of rubbing out the bits I don't need again and adding in the bits that I do because I realised that that photo from before was a front facing camera photo so her markings were obviously flipped over so yeah I'm just going to go around do the markings this is when she really sort of came to life I thought she was really looking like herself and yeah I just went in with the same technique I drew a blob and then I used a combination of the studio pen or the eraser to get rid of things. Now I'm just adding a bit of shadow on her skin so I just upped the size of my studio pen, chose like a mucky white sort of shade and then did what I like to call shadows on her. Again a similar technique to when I do humans but with fur so I found like the darker areas of her face and her arms and her paws and just squiggled on them. Then I realised I'd forgot to record the colours of her tail but I got a photo of her tail and it's like a black and brown like I said filled that in with the same technique and then we will have a play around with the background 
So for the background, I grouped all of the layers together. So I just click on the layers panel, swipe right on all of the ones that I want to group and then hit group. This means I can now move like the entire cat all in one go. Then I'm gonna draw a circle behind it. So draw a rough circle, press and hold onto the screen, tap at the top and select circle. And then I can position that and change it. And then I'm gonna, I think I, oh yeah, I'm adding text. So just into the top left on the little like spanner thing, click that, click add text, choose your font. I upped the tracking to make the space in between the letters bigger, kept it in Y and I've put it at the top. I thought having the circle behind her sort of goes with her name because Luna means moon. So I thought the little circle behind it was quite cute, but I guess you could sort of do whatever background you want. Then I decided to just play around with the background color. So it turned out I wanted it sort of more pink and I felt like this made Luna stand out a lot, her name stand out and I don't know, I just thought it looked really cute and I was actually really impressed with myself. So here's a lesson for everyone. If you feel like you can't draw something, give it a go because you're probably doubting yourself and I believe in you. If I can do it, you can do it. So have fun drawing your furry friends and let me know if you'd like me to do any more videos like this. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.